Let's take a look at another example of how to complete the square. Remember what we're doing, we're trying to get from general form to vertex form. And back to what uh, we were looking at before, general form is ax squared plus bx plus c. And vertex form looks like this. So we have something here that's factored. So something that you know multiplies by itself twice. It turns out that's a lot easier than to deal with. So let's take a look at another example, maybe one that's a little bit tougher. So this one, find the coordinates of the vertex of this. So the first step then is going to be to actually complete the square. That's going to be the goal of this. Okay, we're going to complete the square, get to vertex form. Well, by completing the square, we actually do that. And then we can find, um, well, then we can find the vertex. The vertex should be easy. So let's take a look at how to do that. Do you remember in the last video right here, we were looking at some steps. And here they are, the steps to completing the square. So the, the first step was to take out common factors of x squared and x. So we're going to do that now. So we need some common factors of x squared and x, and it turns out I don't care about what, the, what this extra term here is doing. I don't care. What I want to do is look at common factors of the x squared term and the x term. So let's take a look at those then. So maybe I'll do this back in uh, black here. So I'm going to take out common factors. That means if I look at this, I can take out, there is a number common to 2x squared and 4x. And that number is 2. See, there's a 2 common to both of them. So I'm going to take out the 2, and I'm left with just x squared, but I'm left with 2x. And I'm going to put a big space here and do plus 5. If you're not sure if it works, just try multiplying it out. 2 times x squared is 2x squared, and 2 times 2x is 4x. Remember, I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just looking at the same equation, just writing it in a different way. Now, I've also essentially done this second step as well, to put parentheses around the x squared and x terms. So see what I've done? I've put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. Sorry. So that means I'm able to add and subtract terms. Because what I need to do is to divide the x term by 2 and then square it. So here I go. I'm going to take that x term, uh, and this time the x term is just 2x. I'm going to divide that by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is just a 1. I actually don't care about the x here. I'm just caring about this value, this 1. I take that 1 and I square it. That gives me, well, 1 times 1 is still 1. And then what I'm supposed to do with that number, I'm supposed to add and subtract that value. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add 1 and I'm going to subtract 1. Maybe I'll do it all in one step here. So I'll add 1 and subtract 1. And again, the reason I can do that is because plus 1 minus 1 is the same thing as just doing nothing. It's like doing a 0. But the reason we do this is because then I can rewrite this. If we look at our last step here, we're supposed to rearrange then factor. And that's what I'll do now. So I'll say y equals 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. See, I'm just keeping this x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now I want to kick out this minus 1, but I can't just move it over here and make it a minus 1 because look, there's a 2 multiplying everything, which means if I want to get rid of this minus 1, I have to kind of pay the toll. I have to say minus two time, uh, sorry, minus 1 times 2. So minus 1 times 2 gives me minus 2. That's what it looks like when it's been sort of kicked out. And then, of course, I have a plus 5 hanging out here from earlier. Well, I'm almost done. It turns out now this right here will be something that factors... It'll be x, and it'll be something, something squared. And the trick is, look at what you just did here. This, whatever 2 divided by 2 was, that was a 1. Turns out this will be x plus 1 squared. Again, if you're not sure, you can always just multiply this out. x plus 1 times x plus 1, you'll get x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. And it turns out that gives you this. But what I want to do now is... Just put this together, so minus 2 plus 5, that gives me plus 3. So now I've got this in vertex form. 
and that means I'm nearly done. Okay, this is in vertex form, which is extremely useful because now I can tell without any problems what the vertex is. The vertex is just h comma k. Remember, if we go back to our previous uh, videos, we were looking at this right here in vertex form. If it goes x minus h squared plus k, then the vertex is just h k. In other words, if this is a minus here, then your vertex is just whatever that number was. Uh, that's the x value, and then the y value will be the k. However, in this case, we don't have x minus 1. Do you notice we have x plus 1? So that means then that the vertex will be at negative 1, comma 3. In other words, this number right here, because it doesn't look like a negative 1 here, we have to make it negative 1. It's almost like saying, because uh, we want it to be like this, we want to say that 2 times x minus negative 1, that squared plus 3. That's the same thing. See, and then this right here, that's h. It turns out in that form, this is how we would write it. Because initially, when we were doing the vertex form, we have to have it as a, so some number, times x minus some number squared plus some number. And if you look at this now, the problem was there wasn't a minus here. So if you really want to think about what it is, it's actually x minus minus 1. That's the same thing as saying x plus 1. So that's why if I say x minus minus 1, then h is negative 1. k is still 3. So that means if h is negative 1 and the vertex is always h comma k, then that's why this is the vertex. So that means if I want to try to have some idea what this graph looks like, this x, uh, 2x squared plus 4x plus 5, now that I know where the vertex is, I also know that it opens upwards because this 2 is positive. So that means I know it's sort of a happy parabola. And because I know that the vertex is at x equals minus 1 and y equals plus 3, I know that it does something like this. That's, that's what it looks like. So in this case right here, um, that's, that's my solution. That's what it looks like. Now, I don't know exactly the shape of this graph. I'd have to do a little bit more work to do that. But to see how easy it is, once you know the vertex, you can already start to have a good idea what the graph actually looks like.